Greetings comrades, Multigame Master one reporting in and welcome back to Let's Play 100% Banjo-Tooie. In the last episode, we finished up everything we could within Jolly Roger's Lagoon, and in this episode, we are going to find and gain access to another world. We're going to start by destroying this boulder over here, and behind it is a secret passageway, which we will go ahead and explore. This passageway takes us to yet another digger tunnel. Wherever there are digger tunnels, there is also bound to be trouble, more specifically from a big green minion named Klungo. Speak of the devil, there he is right there. Klungo, revenge seeking minion. Oh no, not you again! Her, her, her. Mistress said Klungo must stop you or I get more beatings. We'll give you a beating too. No, Klungo win this time, has new potion to try. Here we go again. All right, Klungo, show me what you got. A green potion. Nice, I guess. Yer, Not find clever Klungo now! I just dig you, moron. So Klungo just swallowed a green potion. What that does is it makes him transparent, but as you will see in a second, it's defective. Durr! Useless potion! Give away Klungo position! Yes, so as you saw right there, the potion really isn't all that powerful because it does give away Klungo's position rather briefly and when you see him, attack him right away. If you fail to catch him in time, he will hide back in his shield and toss some more potions at you. As usual, 3 hits is all it takes to bring him down. Klungo, I really think you need to go to a hospital. Look at all of those beatings. Baron Burr beats poor Klungo again! It can't be good for your health, Klungo. Why not retire? No! Mistress needs me! Klungo return for more beatings. Then work on new potion. Well, good luck with that, Klungo. Let's follow after him and see where that passageway leads. Shall we? This passageway takes us to the wasteland within the Isle of Hags. Now there are a couple of things that we need to find here and we're going to start with Jamjars' silo over here and learn a new move. Clockwork Kazooie Eggs. The ultimate egg for you to hold! A clockwork bomb that's remote controlled! We can now use Clockwork Kazooie Eggs. Gaze at the size of that egg. That'll be all. Dismissed. Thank you Jam Jars. Real quick, I will demonstrate the Clockwork Kazooie Eggs in this little area right here. But before I do, you'll see two Jinjos. One is an actual Jinjo, the other is a Minjo. How can we tell the difference? Simply with the Clockwork. Use the left stick to move the bomb around and detonate it by pressing X. You are also given a time limit of 20 seconds in which you can move the clockwork around. So whatever you need to do with the clockwork Kazooie, get it done quickly before it explodes. And as you saw right there, the Jinjo on the right was a Minjo, which means the Jinjo on the left is the actual Jinjo that we need to rescue. Of course, that's not everything that you can do with the clockwork Kazooie eggs, as you will see in the future. Now let's check out this passageway over here because it seems rather suspicious for some reason. It actually is an entrance to a brand new world. And real quick, I'm going to grab these notes. And you'll see that this is a new world given this jiggy pedestal over here. And right here we have a signpost. Cue here to ride in the great bubble elevator up to the clouds. Sounds exciting. Unfortunately, there is no bubble that can take us up there. I reckon Master Jiggy Wiki can help us, but we're going to find some more Jiggies before we go back to him. Now over here, we have the entrance to World 5, so let's go on in and get things started, shall we? Welcome to World 5, Pterodactyl Land. It's a prehistoric land filled with cave walls, dinosaurs, and fossils. Now to start things off, we're going to press this switch over here with eggs. I prefer using grenade eggs, don't ask. And that activates the cage so that we can rescue the Jinjo. By the way, here's a brand new enemy, a Stegosaurus known as a Bargesaurus. When he sees you, he will charge and barge into you. Take him out if you can. 
Now there are two ways that you can rescue the Jinjo. One way is with the clockwork. And as you saw right there, the clockwork Kazooie can grab the same items that Banjo and Kazooie can. Making it very useful. The other way involves a power up that we haven't gotten yet from Jam Jars, but we will come to it at some point. Now let's check out this passageway. Over here we have a live caveman. Hey, how are you? Ow! What was that for? You never get jiggy from Rocknuts tribe. We got big tough armor. Oh really? Even if I did this? Wow, you do have tough armor. There is only one way you can take out the rock nut, and that's with the clockwork. Fire a clockwork kazooie egg right behind him, approach his butt, and detonate on sight. Ah! Not fair! Found gap in armor! Others not so easy, still four of us left. Yes, so as he said, there are four members of the Rocknut tribe that you need to find and take down. Once you do, you will get a Jiggy from them. There are five total members of the Rocknut tribe and we've gotten the first one, so we need to find and take down the other four. Now let's check out more of Pterodactyl Land. This area is rather big. Sometimes it's difficult to figure out where you want to go first in order to cover things up within a reasonable amount of time. I do it within my recordings, and of course you guys know this already. Well, let's start things off with jam jars here. Springy Step Shoes. High up ledges are out of reach. A jump to get there, I'll now teach. Choose your spot with the greatest care. Only one jump for the bird and bear. That'll be all. Dismissed. Thank you, jam jars. By the way, that's the second method that you can use to reach the Jinjo over there. Kazooie and Springy Step Shoes. And only Kazooie because she's capable of getting up there. Plus the Springy Step Shoes can be useful for us to access areas that we couldn't before. Now here in the train station, there's a Minjo over there. You don't want to get close to that. And over there, we have another member of the Rocknut tribe. So let's use a clockwork to take him down. I have to say, this is rather indecent. Ah! I'll go shape of the pair! But still three of us left. Three of which I will find and kill. Now let's check out more of Terry Dathalan. And yes guys, that may seem indecent, but there are other cartoons in which characters' butts have been shown. Like the Fairly Odd Parents and SpongeBob SquarePants. And yes, I have seen these cartoons only when I was little, okay? Now here we have another Unga Bunga. You not come past. No one gets in Ugo Bugo Cave. They bad men. Why is that then? We Unga Bungas want to rule all pterodactyl land. Ugos want to share. They bad. And what exactly is wrong with that? Seriously, you cannot keep something as good as a ruling of pterodactyl land to yourself. It's not friendly, it makes you selfish, and above all, it's unfair. Moving on, we'll find a way to deal with him later. Now up ahead in the two cages, you will see a Jinjo and a Rock Nut. Let's use a Clockwork Kazooie to get to those things. Starting with the Jinjo, enter that hole, and you'll recover the Jinjo just like that. And for the rock nut, what you want to do is to start by going in this hole right over here. Then make a right and go inside this hole. And here's where you can take out the rock nut. Ah! I'll go shape of the bear! But still two of us left. Two of which I will find and kill. Now up there we will see a cave which we will go ahead and enter. In we go. Now here inside the Styracosaurus family cave, we will see a beehive that seems different than what we've seen before. I wonder if we can easily get the honeycombs from it still. No we can't, because it moves towards us. Yeah, so that enemy is a cursed beehive. When it sees you, it will ram into you. So you might want to take it out on sight before it touches you. Now in these boulders, we have a shock jump disc pad. 
and also, once I destroy this one as well, a mumble pad. We'll interact with that later, but for now, we're gonna have Banjo and Kazooie be separated from each other for just a brief moment for something important. So let's have them split up and have Kazooie use the shock jump disc pad because we need to reach the extra honeycomb piece up here. Now we can reunite the two, and now let's talk to the family of Styracosauruses. Starting with this one, Scrotty. Go away! Leave Scrotty alone! Why are you so sad? My family isn't keeping too well. Let's hear all the problems you want me to fix. Look at my eldest Scrat. He's very sickly and needs a doctor urgently. Which doctor? I don't care. Any doctor will do. I've heard there's a crazy shaman that lives on the cliff top who might help. Scrit here was out walking one day and came back this size. Now he's too small to be a proper dinosaur. Scrut has gone missing. She took some money from my purse and headed off to the train station. So many problems. I told you so, Banjo. We'll see what we can do. Wonderful! It's nice to know not every character in this game is bad. Yeah, you didn't know. Banjo and Kazooie are the main protagonists. And of course, there are some other good characters as well who help them out along the way. Take this, Curse Beehive! That was easy. Alright, let's get a move on. One thing I find rather odd, dinosaurs can't really carry purses on themselves. Not even money for that matter. It's just not the time for them to have money or any form of currency at all whatsoever. And also, I wonder how it is that Skrit ended up tiny. Maybe he got flattened by something. It's really weird, but hey, it's the way Nintendo and Rare have intended the game to be. And I won't question it whatsoever. Now over here is an extra honeycomb piece, which I will use a clockwork kazooie to get at. Right about now. And now, if we check out the rest of this flooded area, we will see, dead ahead of us, a switch with Kazooie's face. Let's use the Talon Torpedo to carefully press it and activate the cage, setting free the cage Jinjo, which we will now rescue. Now over here, behind this waterfall is a stalk, which we will climb up. I reckon that there's some kind of secret behind the waterfall itself, so let's climb our way to the very top and see what secrets we can find, shall we? Yep, I totally knew there was a secret. River passage. There's gotta be something here for us. And indeed there is. An extra honeycomb piece right over here. And I reckon that at this point, we have found all the extra honeycomb pieces within the area. That's one thing that's already 100% accomplished. Lucky us, I suppose. Now real quick, before we explore this part of the flooded caves, I am actually going to take out that Frazzle over there. Because it deserves to die and it's annoying. Wait, where'd it go? Uh... Oh, there it is, right there. Okay, let me take him out, let me take him out. There. Now, in this part of the river passage, we will find four batches of notes. One right there, one right here, one right over here, and one over there. It isn't necessary for you to take out the frazzle in order for you to get the notes, but it is a preference, especially if you want to prevent yourself from being chased by the frazzle as you're going for the notes. Now over here are two split up pads and a signpost. It's egg sighting in the Oogle and Unga caves. Wow, I should have seen that coming. 
Now, real quick, we're gonna have Banjo and Kazooie split up for a bit because in the River Passage, there is a move that Jam Jars will teach, but only if Banjo is present. Jam Jars' silo is located at the end of this ledge passageway. Along the way, you wanna watch out for the Snapdragons. If you get bit, you'll fall off and I'll have to start over, so be careful and take your time. We're finally here, now let's learn a new move. Taxi Pack. No Kazooie means space in your pack. A way to fill it is what you like. Pick large things up off the ground. In they go and carry them round. That'll be all. Dismissed. Thank you, Jam Jars. The Taxi Pack is a very useful move in carrying big things around. What kind of things exactly? You'll find that out soon. Now let's go ahead and reunite Banjo and Kazooie back together. And to wrap things up for this episode, we are going to explore what is at the end of the river passage. So let's get a move on and swim right along. Although, it really is difficult to reach the end of the river passage by means of swimming, especially given the speed of the current of the river itself. I prefer just walking along on the side here because it's much more faster in helping us reach the end of the river passage, which is right over here, by the way. Now here in this area, we will see a brand new enemy, a Pteranodon known as a Sorosaurus, and before we explore things here, I'm gonna take it out by burning it. Because trust me when I tell you guys, that creature is seriously annoying. Believe me when I tell you that. Now behind the cage behind the waterfall, we will see another member of the Rocknut tribe. So, let's use a Clockwork Kazooie once again and take him out from behind. Boom! Ah! I'll go shape of the pair! But still one of us left. One in which I will find and kill. Now we still have more of Terry Land to explore. Okay, real quick, I'm just gonna take out this guy. Burn you beast! Now, as I was saying, we still have more of Terry Dathaland to explore, but we're out of time for this episode, so we're gonna end things off here. In the next episode, we're going to explore more of Terry Dathaland and possibly make some more prehistoric discoveries within the world if we can. So, Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and until the next episode, this is Multigame Master 1, over and out. See you later comrades!